Hello and welcome back to Sovereign RPG. I hope everyone had a fantastic Christmas. I have a lot of stuff I want to show you guys during the new year. And also I'd like to change the formatting of the videos. Any suggestions would be appreciated. I'm not the most creative guy in the world. Also, if you would like to see or know something about Evecos, please let me know in the comments. I would be more than happy to help. Or if you have any suggestions of any content you'd like to be shown, please let me know down below as well. Remember to like and sub if you enjoy the video. So let's get into the PvE AMA. Starting off with the most popular questions and answers, coming from Melos. First question, could we have more information on the exploration, archaeology and hacking that's coming? Exploration is pretty important in our plan, and we will have some unique exploration gameplay for Eve Echoes. But due to the time limit, next stage we will be more focusing on Corp, Alliances and Sovs. Exploration is right after them. I'm not a big fan of exploration myself, but I know a lot of you are. I'm quite interested to see what they do to change up the exploration gameplay. Maybe I'll start to enjoy it. This next one on the other hand is a big thing for me, the base system, and how easy it is for people to ruin your day. The question being, the base system needs improvement. Difficulty to clean it, difficulty to get access to it, etc. And the answer, totally agreed. The base system is just a basic version. Because of the lack of advanced NPC AI, we received interesting suggestions, like player can do something to help level up the base. We plan to have NPC defend their base more actively when we have advanced AI. And it could be a lot of trouble to kill a base solo. Please keep sharing your ideas. Good ideas can inspire us to make bases better. The way it works now is simple. It takes time for a base to level, and that is it. You can level a base for a week, get it to level seven, only to have someone come in and kill it. And you're back to square one, literally. It's a nightmare and needs to be fixed. Another popular one is ship insurance. Will a ship insurance system be implemented into the game in the future? And the answer is yes. And it will be a little bit different from EVE Online. Hopefully by different they don't mean pay with real money to have it. This next one had me wondering for a while if they would add warp to distance for the encounters. Will there be a way to warp into encounters at a certain distance like you can with anomalies and asteroid belts? And the answer being, sorry, mission beacons are not open. Those beacons do not support warping to distant. They are more dangerous and not designed to be killed by kiting. I mean, it sucks for me being a kiter but I see why they did it. The next one is more around co-op PvE, which we need more of since we don't have incursions and only the person with the mission gets the reward. Will there be PvE content designed for multiple players? Yes, we have some co-op PvE in plan. First step we will do is to allow player to share mission beacons with fleet members so they can do some tough missions together. Other interesting features will be added to the game after we implemented a more advanced NPC AI. I did really enjoy the incursions in EVE Online. If they have something along those lines, I'll be happy. I mean, who didn't like the isk you got from them? was insanely high if you had a good group of people. And then there's one about null sick encounters. Are we going to get null sick encounters? We will gradually introduce some null sick encounters, but encounters are more focused on high sec. I don't really mind either way if they add it or not. Anoms in null give more than enough isk already. The next one's for all you miners out there. Will we get NPCs in belts as well as faction and officer spawns? I would say we'll get NPCs in belts, but if they are faction and officer spawns is still to be decided. At the moment, you can freely mine in belts with no NPC interaction. That will change at least it will make mining a little less boring and the last of the popular questions to do with rigs with rig bps being the way they are now do you expect to adjust the drop rates or is the economy scaling how you expected and the answer being i agree to have more low level rigs they are too expensive now i mean they are expensive for more reasons than there are not enough on the market but i do see their point so that is the popular questions out of the way let's get into the juicy bits of the free questions the first one being the most important one for me in the entirety of eve echoes asked by my boy drek his question was, wormholes, yes or no? And the answer by NetEase, yes. But you know that Echo needs more time to implement. I don't need to say anything about this. They're coming, and that's all that matters. The next one is about bubbles, or the lack of, I should say. It was more of a statement than a question, but bubbles seriously? Interdiction Sphere and Warp Disruption Field will be introduced in Softlaw. Well, it looks like you auto-warpers are safe for a good long while. I can't wait for the implementation and the people who have never played EVE before run into their first bubble, or come back from AFK to a burning wreck. There will be some serious anger. This next one's quite a big one. Will NPCs drop blueprints for faction ships? Many exclamation marks, the guy was kind of excited. All the faction ship blueprints will be dropped from NPCs directly or come from other research material. But now selling BPs in the market is just a temporary solution. I prefer the faction ships being more rare. As anyone knows who has one, they are stupidly OP right now. This is a pretty damn big one for you emulator users, including myself. Do you plan to make PC emulator multi-boxing a bannable offense or discourage it in any way? It negatively impacts all aspects of a mobile game. We are researching about emulators these coming days and we'll come up with a conclusion soon. While I don't agree there is a negative impact, I really don't see them banning emulators. At the end of the day, it will cut a massive chunk of income. But I am biased. I like to use emulators when I'm at home. 
I'm not a fan of capital ships, even though I was an Orcs pilot for years. Necessity and all that. Are capital ships planned for down the road? I understand that it couldn't possibly until deep in after release, but I'm a capital player at heart, and it would be wonderful to have my Rourke War and Carrier. Is that a possibility? Of course they are in the plan, but not in the near future. Thank the lord they won't be out straight away. I know a lot of us have the feeling that Cap's ruined EVE Online, but we'll see how it goes with that one. And finally they told us what Plex is going to be used for. How will Plex monetization work? Basically it's like EVE Online, free to play, use Plex to upgrade Omega, and Plex is tradable. This puts my mind at ease just a little, at least you won't use Plex to buy ships. Yet. I hope you enjoyed this guys. Please remember to like and sub if you enjoyed it, or found it informative. And if you would like to see anything else, please let me know down below. What are your opinions on emulators? I'm excited to hear. And remember, fly safe, and avoid local chat scams.